Psalm 107, I want to read from verse 23 to verse 30. Praise the name of Jesus. Hello. Hallelujah. And I said, I really love this, this version in the King James. I don't know why, but I just, I just, I just seem to fall in love with this scripture written in the King James, and I'm just going to try and read it from the King James. Amen? So that, because it actually captures, it says, they that go down to the sea in ships that do business in great waters. Someone say me, do business. Where? Hey, not in the shallow water. But there is, but when you, when you, when you aspire or decide to do business on great waters, there are risks. But the risk is well worth it. Because you will get to the other side. It says, This see the works of the Lord and his wonders in the deep. For he commandeth and raised the stormy wind, which lifted up the waves thereof. They mount up to the heaven, they go down again to the depths. Their soul is melted because of trouble. They reel to and fro and stagger like a drunken man and are at their wit's hand. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble. And he bringeth them out of their distresses. That's you right there. I said, that's you right there. I said, that's you right there. Now, he maketh the storm a calm, so that the waves thereof are still. Then are they glad, because they be quiet. So he bringeth them unto their desired heaven. And that's where you're going to get to. I say you get to a desired heaven. I say you get to a desired heaven. Now let me look at another scripture with the book of Acts 27. Yeah, let me, this, this will paint a very clear picture to you of what the process that we are about to embark on in the year 2012 and how we will survive it. Praise God. And, um, and I'm saying, I want to say to you, you will survive it. Amen. I say you will survive it. I say you will survive it. Hallelujah. That's why, please, I want to ask you, I want to plead plead with you to please take the prayer community very seriously. It's, it's, it's going to be easy for you to help you to be able to pray through every day. All you need to do is wake up in the morning and flip into your Blackberry and then pray with us. And it doesn't take more than one minute. You will need that on this journey. Somebody listen to me. As the wee waves are about to hit, as the storm are about to begin the way we move, you will need this on your journey. And when the Lord began to speak this to us towards the end of last year, and we began to craft a prayer and a fasting, we didn't know what was going to happen. But you see, God sees the end from the beginning. And all he's asked us to do is just obey him. Now, he could speak something to our heart and we will disobey him and we'll see the consequences. But if we obey him when he says, then we will really get the benefit of it. Okay? And then, bam, southwest west of it, and then bombings and all of other things. But we are very, very confident in our God that we will not sink like the Titanic. I say we will not sink like the Titanic. The Titanic had so much promise, but it didn't make it to the end. It did not make it to a desired haven. It was consumed in the midst of the storm and of the waves of the sea. But we will make it to the end. We have started on this course. We will arrive safely at our desired haven. In the name of Jesus. I say we'll arrive in the name of Jesus. Look at the book of Acts 27 verse 1 to 37. That's where I want, us, I want us to look at from today. Thank you Lord. I read, I read now from um, NIV. When it was decided that we would sail. Somebody say sail. We're dealing with sailing here. Somebody say me sail. We're talking about sailing on deep waters, sailing on great waters, trading on great waters, doing business on great waters, sailing on great waters. Somebody say sailing. Come on, somebody say sailing. So I can say, I can really say, it will be, it will be in order for me to say you're an apostolic sailor. But you will not die on this, on this voyage. I say you're not down on this voyage. I say you're not down on this voyage. You will get your desired safe haven in the name of Jesus. There will be storm. There will be storm. But you will arrive. I say you will arrive. I say you will arrive. 
So let's so the Bible says to the sale for Italy, Paul and some other prisoners were handed over to a centurion named Julius who belonged to the Imperial Regiment. We boarded a ship from Adramitium about to sail for Paul's along the coast of the province of Asia. And we put out to sea. Someone said we put out to sea. You see, the moment you stepped into the year 2012, you were already put out to sea. You were already put out to sea. And we are about to put out to sea. Aristarchus, a Macedonian from Thessalonica, was with us. The next day we landed at Sidon, and Julius, in kindness to Paul, allowed him to go to his friends so they might provide for his needs. From there we put out to sea again, and passed through the lee of Cyprus, because the winds were against us. What was against them? When you push out to trade in the great waters, you'll be faced with the mighty wind. The winds will be against you. But don't be afraid. It's part of the process. Hallelujah. So he says, the winds were against us. Verse 5. When we had sailed, somebody did me sail. Come on, somebody shout me sail. Somebody say to me, I will sail safely. When we had sailed across the open sea off the coast of Cilicia and Pamphylia, we landed at Myra in Lycia. There the centurion found an Alexandrian ship sailing for it for Italy and put us on board. We made slow headway for many days and had difficulty arriving off Snedos. When the wind did not allow us to hold our curse, we sailed to the lee of Crete, opposite Salmone. We moved along the coast with difficulty and came to a place called Fair Havens. You will get your safe haven. This sounds to me like safe haven. Fair Havens sounds like safe haven to me. I said you will get your safe haven. I said you will get your safe haven. The Bible says in the book of Psalm 107 that we read in verse 30, it says God led them to their desired heaven. You will get to your safe haven. One more time I said you will get to your safe haven. Many of you don't seem to believe me. But don't worry, you'll get there. Pastor, are you sure? Yes, I'm telling you. I'll, t- I'll tell you why I know that you'll get there. Amen? Please, but read me. Please, follow me. Hallelujah! So, verse 9. More time had been lost and selling had already become dangerous. Because by now, it was after the fast. So Paul warned them, man... I can see that our voyage is going to be disastrous and bring great loss to ship and cargo and to our own lives also. How does someone stand up and announce this? But you see, when God prepares you before the arrival of the year, then you know what others don't know. Then you are prepared to face the storm and you are very confident that you will get into your safe haven. Not because of the absence of the storm, but right in the midst of the storm. Someone listen to me. There's going to be a blowing of the storm. There's going to be a moving of the wave. But in the midst of all those things, you will get yourself even. I say you will. I say you will. I say you will. So Paul warned them, man, I can see that our voyage is going to be disastrous and bring great loss to ship and cargo and to our own lives also. But the centurion, instead of listening to what Paul said, followed the advice of the pilot and of the owner of the ship. I mean that the word, some people are going to be following the advice of economic experts. You know, I, was, I kept saying this. I am not an economist. I am not a politician. I'm a, I'm a theocrat. I'm not a democrat. I do not live by the votes of the many. Of the multitude. I hear God and I proclaim. Now, this is the time when the theories and the theorems of the economists and the experts are going to fail them. The scripture says, Paul warned the pilots. Said, I know you have been a pilot all your life. But this one will be, this one, that different one. This is a different year, guys. You're going to be seeing a lot of things, a lot of moves. What you need to do is just take your position and God will keep you. The scripture says, since the harbor 
Are you there with me? Verse 12. Since the arbor was insurmountable, or was un- unsuitable to winter in, the majority decided that we should sail on, hoping to reach Phoenix and winter there. This was a harbor in Crete, facing both southwest and northwest. Verse 13. Now they, kept, they, got, in, they got into the storm. Someone say, me the storm. Someone say, me the storm. Now, I don't want you to be afraid of the storm. Storm is going to come. But don't be afraid. Listen to this. When a gentle south wind began to blow, they thought they had obtained what they wanted. So they weighed anchor and sailed along the shore of Crete. Somebody say, sail. Someone say, be sail. They sailed to the shore of Crete. Before very long, a wind of hurricane force called the Northeaster swept down from the island. Another version says the Euro, the Eurocledon. It's from two Greek words, Euro meaning wave and Cledon meaning storm. And um, when you put it together, what you get is hurricane. An hurricane is about to blow in this nation. To blow many people away, trust me. If anybody tells you not, it's a lie. The only people that will survive what is coming are those who are standing with God. And what I want to say to you, I want to warn you, I want to encourage you, stay connected to the community. It's all beginning to make sense now when the Lord began to say to us and it took us days and months and nights to craft this thing. You see, that's how apostles build. We do not build by a rumor. We do not build by newspaper adverts or newspaper reports. We build by what we hear from the Lord. And as long as you are in the community, you are safe. As long as you embrace the community, you are safe. And you will get to your safe haven in the name of Jesus. Now it says verse 14. Before very long, a wind of hurricane force called the northeastern swept down from the, from the island. The ship was caught by the storm and could not head into the wind. So we gave way to it and were driven along. As we passed on to the lee of a small island called Cauda, we were hardly able to make the lifeboat secure. When the men had hoisted it aboard, they passed ropes under the ship itself to hold it together, fearing that they will run aground on the sandbars of Cites, the lower the sea anchor, and let the ship be driven along. We took such a violent battering from the storm that the next day they began to throw the cargoes overboard. On the third day, they threw the ship's tackle overboard with their own hands. When neither sun nor stars appeared in many days and the storm continued raging, we finally gave up all hope of being saved. Did we read this in Psalm 107? The Bible said they came to their wit's end. 